welcome back to my channel. I am super excited about this video today. I have been alluding to this foundation for a couple of weeks slash videos now. Um, I know I mentioned it in my, in my Bare Minerals Foundation review about a foundation that I'm using that I want to say stop what you're doing. Open another window. Don't like leave this video, but you know. Open another window. Look down at the links in my bottom bar. Find this foundation and if you are able, buy it. That's how strongly I feel about this foundation. I got a sample of this because, okay, first of all, we're talking about the Hourglass Illusion Hyaluronic Skin Tint Foundation. I got a sample of this because Faces by Rob on Instagram, who I really adore his work, he uses it. I don't know if he works for Hourglass or not, but he uses a lot of Hourglass products and he uses this a lot on his clients and models. So I, was just, I just got intrigued, you know? I mean, that's that's what social media does. It intrigues us and makes us spend money. And that's what that did. So I got intrigued. I looked at um, reviews. And honestly, the Sephora reviews are not that bright and shining for this foundation. It only has four stars out of 1,500 reviews. Um, you know, some love it. Some say, like, just acts like a BB cream from the drugstore. I hate it. It's mousse-like and not enough coverage. Way too thick to be called a tint. Formula too thick. Chalky and thick. Makes skin look oily. Way too thick. Thick, thick, thick. And I'll go over that in the demo um, on my thoughts on that. But yeah, I was just like, whoa, like these are some pretty harsh claims. Like I'm not going to spend, because this foundation, let me make sure I'm $56 on a foundation that has like a lot of bad reviews. I mean, every foundation is gonna have some bad reviews, but this had a lot. So I went to my Sephora and my um, lovely helper at Sephora really hooked me up on the sample of this and gave me a very nice size pot that, I, actually it's almost gone, I used it up today in the demo, but um, I mean, I wanted to say it lasted me probably seven different applications, which is really nice for a sample. It is a very thick foundation, and I was kind of skeptical when I got the sample. Again, I'll go over that in the demo. I'm just, I'm all over the place. So it is $56. It is the standard one ounce. It does come in a squeeze tube with just a little basic spout like that. Very good for travel. I love these very small, compact um, plastic containers for travel. Okay, apparently this took over the formula for their old, like, tinted moisturizer that they had. I'm not fully aware of that. Like, I don't know exactly everything that went down with that. I never used the old formula, but apparently this is a remake of that, a reformulation. Um, and, and uh, again, some of the reviews were not happy about that. They wanted the old version to be back. Um, I do think that they call this a skin tint and I do not find it to be a skin tint. I feel like it is very full coverage. Um, so a lot of people might be thrown off from that, you know, especially when it's a reformulation of a tinted moisturizer, which by the name isn't going to be very high coverage. So that might be a little misleading. I understand that. But according to the website, it says a foundation in the same superior formula infused with advanced technology to promote the appearance of smoother, firmer, and more youthful complexion. Who doesn't want a smoother? I don't want a smoother. I want a smoother, firmer, and more youthful complexion. So, um, I really think this is going to be geared more towards the normal to dry slash combo, great for mature skin. I'm going to go over that in the demo and afterwards, but if you are interested to know why I love this foundation so much, not even if, because it's already evident that I love this foundation. If you're interested to know why and you want to see a demo and my final thoughts, be sure to keep Okay, so I've got to pull this hair out of my face. I'm so tired of it. I'm getting it done next week and I cannot wait. Okay, so I've tried this foundation with multiple primers and they work, it works great with all of them. Um, I'm gonna try to like insert a picture of the primer that I first used it with. I posted a picture on Instagram about, I don't know, three weeks ago maybe when I actually tried this for the first time and it was a picture of the sample of the foundation and then a sample packet of the primer. And I love the primer so much, I bought the full size, but it hasn't come in yet. So I think that's what I'm gonna try to put, like insert a picture. It's the Dior Skin Forever and Ever Wear Extreme Perfection Primer or base or something, I don't know. But it's actually not like a silicone-y type primer. It's very liquid. Um, it's like a liquidy lotion. But that's what I first used with this and loved it. I've used um, the Hourglass Mineral Veil and loved it. And today I'm just gonna use my old go-to standby, the Cover FX Anti-Aging Primer. 
which I don't know if you can see that. It's a very silicone. It's yellow, which is so odd, but it's a very silicone based and I take it up under my eyes as well. I find that that really helps with concealer when you put your primer all the way up under your eyes. And then I'm going to take, just because I feel like being extra today, this is a sample of the Estee Lauder Pore Vanishing Stick that I got with one of my Sephora orders. So I'm just going to kind of press those into where my pores are the worst. Okay, so the color that I bought in the full size is Warm Ivory. And the sample that I got was Golden. Now Golden is going to be 100% spot on for my summer color but I'm quickly losing any sun that I got at the pool this summer. So I'm gonna mix the two because I think this might be a little too light. I don't know how it's gonna come across on camera, but I assure you this mixture matches me as of today. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of the warm ivory, which if I'll show you, that's what that color looks like. It's very moussey. It is a very thick and moussey foundation. So don't be alarmed. And this right here is the color golden, if that shows you anything. I'm almost done, but that sample lasted me forever. Okay, so I'm just going to mix those two on the back of my hand. Again, it's a very thick, moussey foundation, but it in no way feels heavy on the skin. I'm just going to kind of stripe that on my face and take my beloved Beauty Junkie sponge, which I honestly cannot say enough about. Um... It's, it's perfection, and I think I just spit everywhere. I have not used a beauty blender except on my clients since I bought this, and I've even started packing this in my kit, and I reach for, like, if I only have two clients, I'll reach for this versus the beauty blender. Obviously, like yesterday, I had to use it because I had six faces, but I prefer the beauty junkies, which says so much. Okay, so if you saw that blended out like, amazingly well. For some reason, the very few reviews that I could find on this foundation, a lot of the complaints or the cons was that it was so hard to blend out. Like if you go on Sephora and read the reviews, people just are bashing it saying, it does not blend out on my skin. It's so thick. I don't know how anybody could like this foundation. And honestly, that's why I went and got a sample. Because a lot of times I'll just buy the full size. Um because not too often am I like so disappointed with the foundation that I'll send it back. But that's why I just went and got a sample instead of buying the full size because of all the awful reviews about it being so thick. And But because I had seen Faces by Rob use it so much, I'm like, it can't be that bad because his models and his clients are gorgeous. All right, do you see how that, I, I can't, I just can't even. I don't, I, I don't, I can't explain. So anyways, I still have a little bit left on my um, back of my hand and I don't really see that much redness. I'm just gonna touch up a little bit right here. So to me, it starts out as a strong medium coverage. Um, very, very, very easily built up to full. I don't honestly know where people are getting that this is hard to blend out. I don't know if they were trying to blend it out with their hands, like their fingers. I mean, I can see where that might be hard to do. Or if they were trying to use a brush, it might get streaky because it is a moussey foundation. I feel that moussey foundations don't blend out as well with a brush. You saw with that sponge how easy that was to blend out. I mean, it's just, it's, I cannot get over how easy it is. Now I'm going to do a close up. You can see it does have a dewy finish. It is not a matte finish. It does not claim to be a matte finish, but I cannot tell that there is makeup on my skin. I just feel like it looks like skin evened out skin. My pores, even without that pore vanishing stick, look smaller with the foundation than they do without. It does not patch when you put it on. You can see my forehead. It's just, it's so evenly applied. It's one of the easiest foundations that I have as far as application con is concerned. So one of the main reasons that I wanted to actually show the demo part of this foundation, even though it's fairly short, is that I just want to like kind of negate all those really bad reviews about it not being blendable because it's so thick. Um, it is definitely blendable and I wanted to show you that firsthand. So I'm gonna go finish my makeup and I'll be right back to tell you my final and comprehensive thoughts about this foundation. There is something so refreshing about having all your makeup on. All right, so I will of course list and link all the products that I used on my face 
but let's talk about this foundation. There is very little I can personally say that I don't like about this foundation. Now, do I think that it caters or it's going to cater to everyone? No. I don't think that if you have extremely oily skin, you're going to benefit from this foundation. I mean, it does claim that it has the Hourglass Hyaluronin Complex, although I did not see actual hyaluronic acid in the ingredients, but it clearly is geared towards more of a normal to dry skin type. Now, do I think that if you have combo skin and you just have like an oily T-zone that you could still use it? Yeah, I really do. Like, I think that you could use a stronger mattifier um like the makeup makeup forever step one or something on your t-zone where you get really oily and i don't see this being a problem staying um especially if you have combo skin where a lot of times people's cheeks are dry and their t-zone's oily i think it'd be great for that it on me is very long lasting even in the extreme heat um it does last through workout with me of course i have not tried it without a primer and i always set it um but that that's Something I recommend everyone doing anyways, especially for a more dewy foundation, it's really essential that you set it. Now, as far as setting it, I've used it with various powders. Um, interestingly enough, my favorite powder to use with it is the one that I have on today, and it's the Urban Decay Naked Skin Loose Powder. Um, I also like the By Terry Hyaluronic Skin Tint and the Charlotte Tilbury Powder Flawless Finish Powder, but I love those with everything. So I really think that like it's going to work fine with any primer, any powder that you use with it. You know, this they claim that this reduces the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. It plumps the skin. It has hyaluronic filling spheres, which I guess is where the name comes from. Clinical hyaluronic filling spheres that expand to fill in fine lines and wrinkles. It supports the tightening of skin active glycopeptides known for their targeting of saggy and wrinkled skin. So it is, it does sound like it's more towards, like geared towards mature skin, but I really think that any age can wear this foundation and really reap all of its benefits. Um, just cause anybody, no matter how old you are, looks better with plumper looking moisturized skin. It does have some SPF 15 in it. I do not find that it affects flash photography in my opinion, um, but do be aware that it does contain SPF 15. The finish is like, it just gives a dewy finish. It's not really even a natural. I mean, it is a little bit dewy. It still looks like skin to me. Um, and the thing I love the most about it is that a lot of times dewy finish foundations just look dewier throughout the day. I know I've mentioned that before. This one doesn't. Like, I can powder it, it still looks dewy. And then like four hours later, it's still gonna look dewy, but not like oily. It doesn't look any more dewy. How many times can I say dewy? It doesn't look any more shiny than it did when I first applied it that morning. It blurs my pores, it lasts all day. It's very plumping. It does not have hyaluronic acid, but it does seem to plump your fine lines. Like I don't find that it settles in my um, f smile lines. I do not feel like it settles in my forehead lines, which my three month mark for Botox is coming up. So they're, they're making their appearance again, but this foundation does not settle into it. Um, it does not move around. It is not patchy. I don't know. I feel like it's the foundation that like I get, like my husband says, oh, you're, you're looking good today. Like he, you know, he, I pay attention to when he says that as to what kind of makeup I'm wearing. And this one and the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk are hands down the two that I can wear and he pretty much is going to say that every single time. Um, I get compliments a lot when I wear this foundation. Like, oh, your skin looks so good. And that's the thing. It's like they're not saying your makeup looks great. They're saying your skin looks great. That's why I love this so much because it doesn't look like, I mean, obviously, look, I got makeup on, okay? But it doesn't look like I have a cake face, like the Urban Decay, Urban Decay All Nighter. It looks like you have makeup on. A lot of times the Estee Lauder looks like you have makeup on. People don't compliment my makeup as much when I wear this as they do my actual skin. And that's my goal. And that's one of the reasons I love it so much is because it does look so natural and it's so pretty and it's so dewy and it's just fabulous. So honestly, I know it's a little bit of a higher price tag, but I have yet to really find anything from Hourglass I don't like. Um, I really think it's worth it. So do I really think you need to stop what you're doing right now, which is watching my video, and go buy this foundation? Well, I mean, I kind of do, but I also know it's $56, and I didn't just go straight buy it. I went and got a um, sample. 
do that. Go to your Sephora, get a sample of this, and please, if you try it, come back here and tell me what you think because I am really eager to see if you're gonna love it as much as I do. So hopefully that, I don't know, I kind of feel like I was all over the place and I've got a hair on me. Oh, it's irritating me. I kind of feel like I was all over the place because I'm just so excited about this foundation, but I hope that I answered any questions you may have had. Um, if I didn't, please always feel free to put it down in the bottom bar and let me know if there's another foundation that you want to see me review. It does not have to be new. This is not a new foundation, but it's one that I couldn't find many reviews on, so I thought it was worthy of doing a video. So let me know. As always, thank you so much for watching, and y'all have a very blessed.